Welcome fellow bookworms to Tibra's Den. My name is Whitney and today we have round two of Once Upon a TBR Honey Jar, which is my TBR game. I just started it this year. It's my very first time ever doing a TBR game and so far absolutely loving it. I mean, we only had one round. Um, but I really enjoyed that round and I've been wanting to play ever since. It is still early in January. Um, I like, I'm wanting to do this game early so that way if I don't have some books on my shelf, I can try to fulfill the prompt by going to like thrift store or such. I'm going to try to mostly use what I have on my shelf, but just in case, um, I do kind of want to add in a thrifting element as well. So let's go ahead and get into it. First, I want to kind of talk about what I hope to get on already and we'll see. So first up we have the pick for my genre thon which is just basically a year-long readathon um, where each month there's a different prompt focusing on different genre or genre adjacent um, like age groups essentially. Uh, and so for February it's the language of love and the prompt is to read a poetry book. So I chose The Death of Sitting Bear by N. Scott Mamaday, um, new and selected poems by him. And yeah, I'm really excited because I'm also wanting to read more like Native American works as well. So this fits both of those things. Uh, so one of the most distinguished and unique voices in American letters, N. Scott Mamaday was born into the Kiowa tribe and grew up on Indian reservations throughout the American Southwest. The customs and heritage that influence his upbringing, notably Native American oral tradition, are the centerpieces of his work. The Death of Sitting Bear showcases as never before Mamaday's extraordinary lyrical talent and the matters closest to his heart. The title poem is a memorial to the great Kiowa warrior and chief, a formidable man, singular and mysterious, one who exists now in the distance of myth and oral history. Mamaday writes, I feel his presence close by in my blood and imagination, and I sing him an honor song. To Mamaday, words are sacred, language is power. Spending nearly 50 years, the poems included in this collection illuminate the human condition. Mamaday's connection to his Kiowa roots and his spiritual relationship to the American landscape. Here, too, are meditations on mort mortality, love, and loss, as well as reflections on the incomparable and hollowed terrain of his native Southwest. The death of Sitting Bear evokes the essence of human experience and speaks to us all. So, I am not a poetry reader at all, um, but I'm really hoping I will enjoy this and I can pick up some more throughout the year. Hopefully this will kind of inspire me to do that. So that's the first book on my TBR officially. I'm not going to try to get it on my, you know, for any of the prompts or anything. This is just on top of whatever I get. So there's that. Now some of the books I would like to get on there is I would love to read Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I've never actually read anything by Jane Austen. Um, and this is one of my favorite movies and I've heard such good things about this that this is where I want to start and I figure February is the perfect time to do so. So I'm really hoping I can get this on there officially. If not, I'm planning on reading this anyway. Um, so that, that one will get read. Um, these other ones though, if I get them on, great. If not, uh, I'm not going to push too hard to read them. But first up, we have Belladonna by Adeline Grace. Um, so everybody's been reading this lately. Well, not everybody, but a lot of people. Uh, and yeah, I'm really interested in reading this. Um, I believe there is a romance in here as well. So that works for February. And there's a character of death, which I always love. And I'm pretty confident I'm going to really enjoy this book. And so I would really like to get to this in February. Next, we have... A kind of a darker romance um, and this is book one of the Four Horsemen. This is Pestilence by Laura Thalassa and really interested in reading this series. It is kind of like a darker romance type book um, which I'm not sure how much I'm going to enjoy that but I'm excited to give it a try anyway so there's that one. Then we'll have 
kind of a reread. I listened to it initially, um, and it has a very, very slow burn romance, but I want to get started on physically reading the series, and that's Daughter of No Worlds by Carissa Broadbent. Um, so like I said, I listened to this, which audio is not my preferred method, and I didn't pick up fully on everything, uh, so I'm really excited to read this physically so I can get a little bit more out of it. So there's that. And then lastly, um, not a romance, but just one I really am hoping to get to sooner rather than later because this is a book I really wanted to read last year and never got it and never got around to it. And that's Lots Away by uh, Darcy Little, Little Badger. So um, this has been one I've been wanting to read a long time. I was hoping to get it for Christmas. I ended up not getting it. Uh, and so it was the one book that I was like, I don't want another year to go around without me getting this. Um, and so I ended up ordering it as kind of my Christmas present to myself. So um, we have this one as well that I would really like to officially get on to the TBR. So as far as the game goes, we'll go ahead and get into it. Last time I went... I did the, went around the game board, and then I pulled all the prompts. I think I'm going to try to combine those, and I just want to see what's going to work better for me. So uh, if this ends up working better for me, I'll continue it going forward. If I don't really like it this way, then I'll go back to how I did it last month, where I did the game board, then I did the honey jar prompts, um, and then I chose my books. But we'll try to combine the game board and the honey jar prompts all together this time. Uh, so yeah, let me go ahead and set up my board and we'll get into the gameplay. All right, just a reminder, first we have to choose which character we are going to be playing and that does correlate to my first book as well. So just here, if we get a one, it's Christopher Robin and that's a coming of age or middle grade or younger. If we get a two, that's who and it'll be a classic or comfort read. Three is Piglet, and that's an autobi author or a reread. And four is Rabbit, and that is a free choice. So we'll do that first. And then also a reminder, um, if we land on blue, the genre is sci-fi. Yellow is historical fiction. Green is fantasy. Red is romance. Uh, orange is mystery or thriller. Uh, purple is any genre. If we land on black, we move forward three spaces and use the genre for that color. And we also had to pull two honey jar prompts if we land on black. Um, now, granted, there's two blacks. Um, one at the very end, we just move to the last blue space. And then the one that sends us back to sit on the bench. <laughs> so those two don't count, but the other black spaces, we move forward. So... Let's go ahead and see which character we're going to be playing. So three is Piglet. So that's an auto buy author or a reread. So we'll go ahead and scoot go back and move Piglet a little bit forward. Um, and yeah, let's go ahead and move that away. Okay. Let's go ahead and see our first move here. We have this one. So we got an orange right off the bat. Um, and so that's a red. We move all the way up here behind Christopher Robin. And we'll go ahead and choose my honey jar prompt too. Let's see if we can get that. Ooh, so we got um, the Little Mermaid. And this is Deal with the Devil, which, I mean, because she makes the deal with the sea witch. So, basically the same thing. So, that is the first combination. And again, um, ooh, that's perfect, because orange is mystery or thriller. And then you're making a deal with the devil. So, okay, let's go ahead and see what we get next. And we got a yellow, so we get to move pretty far here. That's our first yellow, and then our honey jar prompt. And yellow, again, is historical fiction. And our honey jar prompt, the poo lid keeps falling down. <laughs> Let's see here, let's go with this one. Okay, and we got Winnie the Pooh. So this is a historical fiction with, come on. Can you focus on it? 
red or yellow on the cover. So that should be pretty doable. Okay. Let's see our third poll here. Oops. <laughs> we got a green here. So I'm not moving too far, just two spaces. And our honey jar prompt. And green is fantasy, so we need a fantasy that. Um, so this is Pocahontas, and we need a fantasy that has a peacemaker or it doesn't want to focus here, or diplomat. So that should be doable as well. I'm excited for that one. All right, let's see what our fourth poll is here. Okay, and got a red one. So. Again, not too far, and red is romance, so we need a romance that, ooh, so we got Aurora, so we need a romance where there's somebody who's cursed, come on, cursed or bespelled, there it goes, <laughs> so, all right, so a romance, that should be doable as well, there's that. Okay, and our fifth pull here, let's go here, and we got another yellow, so I'm not moving very far, um, and so again, another historical fiction, and let's see what we get here, let's go with this one, ooh, so we got Thumbelina, and it's a very small book less than 150 pages. So I have to see, and it has to be historical fiction. So we shall see what we get for that. All right, our sixth poll here. Go here, and we got another green. So we move a good chunk there. So green again is fantasy. So we need a fantasy that here um so we got jack and the beanstalk so this is a fantasy where the character makes bad choices so we're gonna do that we'll figure that out i think this is gonna be a interesting collection of books <laughs> all right and then next we get ooh, our first purple and don't move too far but that's something and so purple is free choice, so I can choose any genre, but I do have to fit the prompt here. And we'll go for this one over here. Ooh, so this is just a bookworm, um, and I don't get a free choice because loved one picked, so I'll probably have my husband pick me a book for this, but um, he won't have to follow any genres. He can literally pick me anything, so... All right, let's see what we got. This is poll eight. And to move. And we got another yellow. It's a lot of historical fiction, but we move pretty far on this one. Um, so it's fantasy and historical fiction month, it looks like. So I'm going right here. Okay, so this is... Uh, <laughs> Rapunzel, and it's an evil mother figure, so that historical fiction with an evil mother figure, that should be interesting. Okay, let's see, this is poll number nine, and we got another green, so another fantasy, and that's Pooh, so that one doesn't count because we're playing Piglet. Normally, if we get a special square, we don't have to follow the genre, but since we're playing Piglet, that one does it. Doesn't count, so. Sorry. Let me go ahead and. So, Fantasy Dog Pick. So, this is the Big Bad Wolf. And we got a dog pick, which is always fun. So, I need to choose three fantasies, and then my dog, one of the dogs, will pick from that. So, which we got one of the dog picks because there's multiple dog picks in there. And we got one of those last month, Nidra chose. So I'll probably choose 
on one of the other dogs. But let's see what we get for poll 10. And we'll go with this one. <laughs> another yellow. So another historical fiction. Uh, what do I need right here? And let's see. So a historical fiction that... Go with this one. So we got... Kinga and Rue, so it's in the pouch, close parent-child bond. I think that will be doable. So we're running out of board space here. Let me move all these down. All right, so we're getting towards the end of the board. So this is poll 11. So we get, ooh, we get our first blue, which unfortunately only moves us one space, but that is a sci-fi. Um, so we need a sci-fi that... this one. So this is another Jack and the Beanstalk. So sci-fi set in another world, that is very, very, very easy. So that is definitely doable. I'm glad I didn't get that one with like historical fiction because that would never work. So, all right. So now let's see what we got here. And go ahead and go here. So we get a red. So another romance. And so this is Piglet to next yellow. So we'll go ahead and move up here. So in this case, because it had a special um, one, then I don't have to worry about the genre at all. I just have to pick the honey, part, honey jar prompt. So let's see what that prompt is. Go here. So another bookworm, and this is perfect. It's winter themed because we're still in winter, so. Okay, let's see what we can do here. So this is poll 13, and we get a blue. So I'm not quite done. We move to this blue, so another sci-fi. And go ahead and go with this one. So another Kinga and Rue. And this is childhood, so middle grade or younger. So sci-fi that's middle grade or younger. So, okay. All right. So we only got four choices. And if I get a red or blue, then the game's over. Uh, or black. If I get black, red, or blue, the game's over. If I get orange, I move. If I get any other color, that just goes off to the side. So, see and a purple so this doesn't count at all because i can't move so that's just going to go kind of off to the side and we'll pull again and we get an orange so we move one and again orange is mystery or thriller okay so mystery or thriller that right here so another worm and this one is an earth element, so a mystery or thriller that has an earth element to it. So again, if we get black, red, or blue, we're done. And if we don't, we keep pulling until we get one of those. So let's go ahead and see here. So we get another orange so that goes off to the side. Then we get another orange so that goes off to the side. Um, and then we get a green so that goes off to the side and then we get an orange so that's off to the side and another orange let's see here we gotta get one of those eventually <laughs> a purple green we're gonna pull every color except that so okay and red so red's our last one and we made it to the north pole so let's pull our honey jar prompt and go ahead and do here so who there is a rumbly in my tummy so i need a romance that has something to do with like food um, in some way. So we'll see what I can find for that. That should be fairly easy. And yeah, that's the game. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight 
<laughs> tiles that I was not able to use. So I have to find a book that has to do with the number eight. There could be eight words in the title. I doubt I'll find one like that. Um, it could end in the number eight. Could have been published in the year that ends in the number eight. Like just anything that has to do with eight. So I am going to go see what I can find and I will be right back. All right, I'm back. I got all my books picked out. It was quite the chore. Um, there's some that I kind of had to adjust a little bit, but we'll talk about those when we get there. Uh, but yeah, I got them all picked out. There's a total of 19 books on this TBR, 17 from the game, my genre thon book, and then one that I just wasn't able to get onto the official TBR that I do want to read. Um, and that doesn't include any rollovers from January. Um, that's kind of my punishment if I don't finish the TBR from the month before. They roll over and I start with those books, get them read um, before moving on. So uh, it's early in the month. We're just barely coming to the first week, the end of it. So um, so yeah, we'll see how many of those get rolled over. But I'm fairly confident I can knock out most of them. So let's go ahead and see what I ended up picking. So first, of course, we rolled for a character, which was little Piglet here. Um, we rolled a three. And so if I get Piglet, it's either an auto by author or a reread. I decided to go with the reread. So I originally listened to this book. Um, and that is Daughter of No Worlds by Carissa Broadmet. Um, I listened to it and got a physical copy along with the rest of the series for Christmas. And I don't always do well with audio, especially like fantasy and fiction type books. Uh, so I'm excited to give this a reread and get more out of it by having a physical copy. So that is the first book officially on my TBR. Basically in this one, um, you have Tasana and she is a slave um, and when she goes to buy her freedom something happens and then she goes with these people and ends up teaming up with Max and he's in charge of training her and there is a slow burn romance there um, and then she her ultimate goal is to learn how to use magic and such and free her the people um, that she left behind so that's kind of what takes place in this first one and like I said I'm really excited to reread it and get more out of it by reading a physical copy versus listening to it so that was my first choice then we got an orange disc um, which orange is mystery or thriller so then we got our little disc here and we pulled the little mermaid and that one is deal with the devil or, you know, Little Mermaid is the Sea Witch, but, uh, and so for this one, I knew mystery, thriller, like suspense books, Iris Johansson, she frequently does this where they're kind of having to make a deal with somebody that isn't very trustworthy and whatnot. So I had several options. I was mainly looking at her standalones, not, um, any that were part of a series. And so for this one, I chose Fatal Tide because it has that water element, which I thought fit for The Little Mermaid. Um, and so in this one, you have marine researcher Melis Nimid is treading dangerous water and she's not, and she's about to be dragged under. Melis knows something that has already caused one oceanographer to disappear from the face of the earth. And that's only part of a past torn by violence and betray betrayal. She thought she had put the past behind her when she arrived at her Caribbean island home to research dolphin behavior, but Melissa's peace and her life are about to be shattered by a savage killer who is cutting a path of destruction and death that leads directly to her. Only one person can save her, a man who claims to be a fellow oceanographer, but what this enigmatic stranger really wants, Melis may not discover until it's too late. Because whoever is after her knows her fears intimately. And soon Melis will be forced to relive them all over again. Except for the final nightmare. The one she cannot possibly survive. Um, so she's kind of teaming up with somebody she can't trust. So there is that one. And then let's see. We got a yellow which is historical fiction. So here's a little disc there. And we got Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> so we got uh, historical fiction with red or yellow on the cover. Uh, and so for this one, 
I had the perfect one and this one I hauled at a thrift store fairly recently and I didn't want to read it because I love the cover and it's Pieces of Sky by Kaki Warner and I just absolutely love this cover so you have the yellow and kind of the red in the sky um, it's like a sunset so that's beautiful and so in this one you have on a stagecoach traveling through New Mexico territory Jessica Thornton is a long way from the cool mist and lush gardens of her native England an authoress and mil milliner she carries the weight of a scandalous secret, a horrible shame that has brought her to the West in a desperate search for the only person she can trust, her brother. No one prepares Jessica for the heat or the hardships, and no one prepared her for a man like Brady Wilkins. For despite the rancher's rough hewn appearance and her own misgivings, Jessica must put her life in his hands after their stagecoach crashes. And she begins to see the man behind the callous hands and caustic wit, a man strong enough to carve out a home in the wilderness, brave enough to fight for his own, and passionate enough to restore her faith in herself and in her heart. So that looks like beautiful and I think it's gonna be one I'm going to enjoy so then we got a green which is a fantasy and we got Pocahontas um, which we have peacemaker or diplomat for this one so this was definitely a hard one for me um, I spent a lot of time searching for a book and in the end, I went with this one. Um, I'm not sure how well it fits, but it just seemed like it would work in my mind. And I just hauled this the other day. So it's Jade Fire Gold by June C.L. Tan. Um, love this cover. It also has this. I actually got to the thrift store. She was just, she had just got a donation. Um, and I think this is the person that's consistently donating, you know, like book subscription box books and more popular books and such. So I got a good haul from there. Um, but the reason I chose this one, one, it's fantasy. And two, it says, in an empire on the brink of war. So I'm thinking it's on the brink of war. So they're going to have to play a role in preventing that war, which is peacemaking slash diplomat. So you have on is no one with no past and no family. And Alton is a lost heir his future stolen away as a child, so I think he'll kind of fulfill that role. Um, when they meet, Alton sees On in a path to reclaiming the throne. On sees a way to finally unlock her past and understand her lethal magical abilities. But they may have to pay a far deadlier price than either could have imagined. And that's all it really tells you. Like I said, brink of war, an heir to the throne. Um, I think he'll kind of fulfill that role of trying to keep the piece. So I thought that's the closest I'm going to get based on what I had on my shelf. So that's what I went with. And then we have, let's see, red. Um, so we got a red disc. And for this one, we got Aurora. And so we got Cursed or Bespelled. So a romance that has some kind of curse or spell. And so the, the a person's be spelled somehow and so for this one it's not technically romance but it does have a romance in it so I'm counting that um, and like I said when I'm struggling I go with the honey jar prompt over the genre anyway and so for this one I chose Six Crim Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim and I am so excited to read this one this is one I wanted to read all last year and my I got it for Christmas this one and the sequel to it so really excited to start this one and this is based on a fairy tale so not sure how you pronounce the name Sh Shiori Ama the only princess of Kayata has a secret forbidden magic runs through her veins normally she conceals it well but on the morning of her betrothal ceremony Shiora loses control. At first, her mistake seems like a stroke of luck, forestalling the wedding she never wanted, but it also catches the attention of Raikama, her stepmother. A sorceress in her own right, Raikama banishes the young princess, turning her brothers into cranes. She warns Shiori that she must speak of it to no one. 
for with every word that escapes her lips, one of her brothers will die. Penniless, voiceless, and alone, she already reaches for her searches for her brothers and uncovers a dark conspiracy to seize the throne. Only she already can set the kingdom to rights, but to do so she must place her trust in a paper bird, a mercurial dragon, and the very boy she fought so hard not to marry. And she must embrace the magic she's been taught all her life to forswear no matter what the cost. And so I believe, you know, it's it's there's a a romance between her and the one she didn't want to marry. So, uh, and there's like a little picture. So my sister-in-law got me this and then she did a bunch of bookmarks and two of these little picture, um, uh, what are they called? Where you put collage. <laughs> That's the word I was looking for. Um, anyway, I'm really, really excited to give this a read. Um, so yeah, that's what I chose for that prompt. And then we got another yellow. It was the game of yellows, that's for sure. Um, so we got another yellow disc. And this one was Thumbelina. So a very small book, less than 150 pages. Um, so again, this was hard. A historical fiction that's less than 150 pages. But I ended up having the perfect book for this. So we have, which technically this might be considered non-fiction, but we're going with it. So West from Home, Letters of Laura Ingalls Wilder, San Francisco, 1950. This was edited by Roger Lee McBride, and the historical setting is by Margot um, Patterson Doss. So this is what I chose. It's really short. It's only um, 124 pages. So... That's what we're going with. And so basically, I think it's just like her letters to her daughter. Uh, Laura Ingalls Wilder went to San Francisco in 1915 to visit her married daughter, Rose Wilder Lane. Many years had passed since Laura had traveled through the Midwest as a child by covered wagon. Now she made the long trip from Missouri to California by train. It was the perfect time to go. San Francisco was celebrating the opening of the... Panama Canal with a great world's fair. Since Almanzo could not leave the farm, Laura, so she's writing, she visited her daughter, she's writing back to her husband. Laura wrote her husband long letters to share with him the excitement and wonders of the trip. Her letters are filled with her descriptions of the country she saw, the people she met, and most of all, the beauty of San Francisco and um, the Panama Pacific International Exposition. Laura's letters discovered after her death reveal the active curiosity and warm personality of the woman who was later to write the classic Little House books for children based on her girlhood on the frontier in the late 19th century. Blah, blah, blah. It just goes on to talk about the Little House and the Prairie book. So yeah, um, excited to read that. Then we got, um, let's see, a green, which is fantasy. And for this one... We got Jack and the Beanstalk, and we got Bad Choices, because he makes a very bad choice when he sells the beans, so that is what I chose for that. And so for this one, I went with Pestilence by Laura Thalassa. <laughs> um, so this is fantasy romance, um, more on the romance side, like dark romance, but it's still fantasy, uh, and as long as the subgenre fits the genre I'm counting it um and so yeah going with this which is of course book one and the four horsemen and Sarah Burns makes some bad choices so when pestilence comes for Sarah Burns town one thing is certain everyone she knows and loves is marked for death unless of course the angelic looking horseman is stopped which is exactly what Sarah has in mind in mind when she shoots the unholy beast off his steed <laughs> Too bad no one told her pestilence can't be killed. So that was her first wrong um, or bad choice. Now the horseman, very much alive and very pissed off, has taken her prisoner and he's eager to make her suffer. Only the longer she's with him, the more uncertain she is about her true feelings towards her. His true feelings towards her and hers towards him. And now, well, Sarah might still be able to save the world, but in order to do so, she'll have to sacrifice her heart in the process. So that's probably... <laughs> bad choice number two um, is falling in love with pestilence so I'm going with that one and then let's see here we got purple which is a free genre um but the prompt I picked so 
so this purple this uh, was just a book bookworm and it's a loved one pick so this will go back um, into the honey jar um, some of these will go back in most of them will stay out until I get where it's down low and then I'll recycle them in but that one will go back in because I would like to get that one again uh, and so for this one I had my husband picked he was almost gonna be mean to me uh, and pick Shogun by James Clavell um, which is a very chunky book and I told him I have a lot of books on my TBR so <laughs> please be nice and so he went with this one which he was talking about and gave it to his mom to borrow and when I pulled it out to give to her I was reading the synopsis and I was like oh that actually sounds good and luckily this one's a little bit shorter it's only 311 pages and it's called Dry Water and it's by Eric S. Nyland and in this one you have, let's see here, so Lightning chased Larry Nigitis, Nigitis through the honey mesquite and creosote covered hills of Sesco County, New Mexico to dry water, a reborn ghost town with a reputation for unusual occurrences and inexplicable, inexplicable phenomena. A shy, sensitive author and reluctant psychic, Larry has the unsettling ability to see how other people will die. He believes he has come to this far removed place to escape old entanglements and write in peace, but there is no peace and there never has been in dry water. There are, however, rumors of fable, a fable spring of water that cannot be drunk, flowing through the nether realm where living and dead mingle, causing ripples in history and wrinkles in time. It is Larry's destiny, unbeknownst to him, to locate the remarkable waterway. His arrival has not gone unnoticed by two of the town's more unconventional denizens. Raja, daughter of the terror winds, a local celebrity and witch who seeks the water's power to erase humankind's future by altering the past, and Nikolos, her lover slash nemesis, an ageless necromancer whose internal mission is to the destruction of all prophets. But why clueless Larry Nagitis is far from helpless, as he is joined by otherworldly allies, a gunslinger ghost, and a ten-year-old Navajo shaman, who are committed to aiding him on his terrifying and essential journey through different lives and other dimensions. So, yeah, I thought that sounded actually really, really interesting, and I'm excited to read this. So there's that one. Then, let's see here... We got another historical fiction, uh, and this is the one I really struggled with. So we another historical fiction, and we got Evil Mother Figure. So this is Rapunzel. And so for this one, I ended up not going with historical fiction because I just couldn't find one that was on my shelves. And when I was looking to see what was available, there was nothing that I was specifically interested in. So... I just went with Evil Mother figure <laughs> on this one. And I chose Ray Bearer by Jordan if you go. Uh and yeah, I held this a very long time ago. Um, so I'm really excited to finally get to this. And I actually got the other one. This I got these like my first trip to that little church thrift store where whoever donates donates a lot of good books. So in this one you have Teresai has always longed for the warmth of a family. She was raised in isolation by her mysterious, cunning, and often absent mother known only as the Lady. And I figure that fits um, Mother Gothel perfectly, like, in description. So that's why I think this one works. When Teresai comes of age, the Lady sends her to the capital of the global empire of... Uh, Aritzar, to be chosen as one of the Crown Prince's Council of Eleven. If she's picked, she'll be joined with the other council members through the Ray, a bond deeper than blood. But the lady has other ideas, including a magical wish that Teresai is compelled to obey, kill the Crown Prince once she gains his trust. So, yeah, I'm excited to finally get to this. It's been sitting on my shelves forever, and I just haven't been able to work it in. So, finally going to be reading that one. And then next, let's see here. Um, so next we got uh, Green, so fantasy again. Um, and this one, we got The Big Bad Wolf, 
which was another dog pick. I got this last month. I don't remember. I think it was Lady and the Tramp or something. But I did get this a dog pick last month, um, which I don't mind. There's several in there because uh, I like dog picks. So, and this one, and they'll probably go back in too. That way I can frequently get that. Um, but let's see. So this one I did, I gave her the choices of Lots of Way, Belladonna, and I forget... You'll see it here. Oh, 10,000 um, door, the 10,000 doors of January. That's the other one. So I was looking, I had a lot of way in Belladonna that I wanted to read. And then I was looking on my shelf for another fantasy that I could put down for her. So I let Boo Boo pick. She's kind of my wild child. And so Big Bad Wolf, I figure that's perfect for her. Um, a little trouble getting her to calm down enough to stay back and then when I released her, she's looking at me for the treat and set it down, but you'll see that right here. Wait, uh-uh, back, back, sit, wait, uh-uh, back, stay, uh-uh, uh-uh, <laughs> back it up, back it up, sit, stay, 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 stay. Release. They're down there. And so as you saw, she ended up picking Belladonna by Avalon Grace, which I am so excited to read this. I was hoping for a lot to wait over this one, but I'm still really, really excited to read this one. And, uh, you know, this is very popular right now, so you probably know what it is about, but just in case you don't, Orphaned as a baby, 19-year-old Signa has been raised by a string of guardians, each more interested in her wealth than her well-being, and each has met an untimely end. Her remaining relatives are the elusive Hawthorns, an eccentric family living at Thorn Grove, an estate both glittering and gloomy. Its patriarch mourns his late wife through wild parties while his son grapples for control of the family's waning reputation, and his daughter suffers from a mysterious illness. But when their mother's restless spirit appears claiming she was poisoned, Signa realizes that the family she depends on could be in grave danger and enlists the help of a surly stable boy to hunt down the killer. However, Signa's best chance of uncovering the murderer is an alliance with Death himself, a fascinating, dangerous shadow who has never been far from her side. Though he's made her life a living hell, Death shows Signa that their growing connection may be more powerful and more irresistible than she ever dared imagined. So... I'm so excited to read this. Um, so yeah, that is that one. And then we got another yellow, so another historical fiction. Um, like I said, it was the month of historical fictions here. So another yellow. And this one we got Kinga and Rue. So in the pouch, a close parent-child bond. So for this one, I ended up going with Rainwater by Sandra Brown. This is a recent haul from the thrift store. Um, I just, I love the cover. So in this one, let's see, the year is 1934. With the country in the stranglehold of drought and economic depression, Ella Barron runs her Texas boarding house with an efficiency that ensures her life will be kept in balance. Doing chores of cooking and cleaning for her residence, she cares for her 10-year-old son, Solly, a sweet but challenging child whose misunderstood behavior finds Ella on the receiving end of pity, derision, and suspicion. When David Rainwater arrives at the house looking for lodging, he comes recommended by a trusted friend as a man of impeccable character, but Ella senses the that admitting Mr. Rainwater will bring about unsettling changes. However, times are hard, and in order to make ends meet, Ella's house must remain 100% occupied. So Mr. Rainwater moves into her house and impacts her life in ways that Ella can never have foreseen. The changes are echoed by the turbulence beyond the house walls. Friends and neighbors who have thus far maintained a tenuous grip on their meager livelihoods now face foreclosure and financial ruin. In an effort to save their families from homelessness and hunger, farmers and cattlemen are forced forced to make choices that come with the heart-rending con consequences. The climate of desperation creates a fertile atmosphere for racial tension and social unrest. Conrad Ellis, privileged and spoiled in Ella's nemesis since childhood, steps into this arena of teeming hostility with, to exact his, his vengeance 
and demonstrate the extent of his blind hatred and unlimited cruelty. He and his gang of hoodlums come to embody the rule of law, and no one in Gilded, Texas is safe, particularly Ella and Sally. In this hotbed of uncertainty, Ella finds Mr. Rainwater a calming presence. She is moved by the kindness he shows other boarders, Sully, and Ella herself. Slowly, she begins to rely on his soft-spokenness, his restraint, and the steely resolve of his convictions. And on the hottest, most violent night of the summer, those principles will be put to the ultimate test. So, yeah, I'm excited. And it mentions, you know, Sully multiple times, single mother raising a 10-year-old boy. I'm sure there will be um, a close bond. And if not, it's still a mom and her boy like Kinga and Rue. So that is what I picked for that one. And then we got a blue, which is sci-fi. Um, and so for this one, um, we got Jack and the Beanstalk. So there's the blue. And then Jack and the Beanstalk. And so this one is a sci-fi set in another world, which you would think would be pretty easy, except <laughs> I don't have a lot of sci-fi. Um, my husband does, but I have his books all like, Push down uh, and not as easy to get to. So for this one, I ended up going with Anne McCaffrey, Freedom's Landing. I've actually been reading the series kind of backwards. I read the fourth book in the series, then the third book. I hauled the second book. I have not read that one yet, though, and then I finally got this one. Um, and so, yeah, I'm excited to actually start at the beginning of the series. It does start on Earth, but then it quickly moves to another world. So, in this one, you have Kristen Borgensen lived a normal life right up until the day the spaceships floated into view above Denver. As human slaves were herded into the maw of the massive vessel, Chris realized her normal life was over and her fight for freedom was just beginning. The alien contending value strength and intelligence in their slaves, and Chris has managed to survive her enslavement while hundreds of other humans have not. But her trial has just begun. For now, she finds herself part of a massive experiment. The aliens have discovered a new world, and they have a simple way of finding out if it's habitable. Drop hundreds of slaves on the surface and see what happens. So, that is that, and they're on this new planet. So I figured that will work. Then, let's see, we got Red, which is um, romance, but it was a special square because we're playing Piglet. Piglet moved to the next yellow, and in my rules, if I land on a special square, you can just forget the genre. So the genre doesn't matter, um, even though it was Red, and then, you know, I moved to yellow, so that would have been historical fiction. It doesn't matter. Um, but I did get a bookworm, and for this, it is winter-themed. So for this one, I ended up going with the third book in the Ice Planet Barbarian series. So this is Barbarian Lover. Um, this is by Ruby Dixon. I'm hoping to read the second one in January. It's kind of lower on my list of priorities. It was kind of an extra one that I tried to sneak in there. Um, but I would like to read it. So hopefully I'll read that one. And then I'll get to this one in January. If not, I'll just read the second one. Um, but this one, as one of the few humans stranded on the ice planet, I should be happy that I have a new home. Human women are treasured here, and one alien in particular has made it clear he wants me. It's hard to push away the sexy, flirtatious Ayako when all I want to do is grab him by his horn and insist he takes me to his furs. But I got a terrible secret. The aliens who abducted me are back, and thanks to the translator in my ear, they can find me. My presence here endangers everyone, but can I give up my new life and the man I want more than anything? Um, and so I'm excited for this one. Um, I really, the second one, I'm really interested in that character, and uh, this is another character that I really liked from the first book. So excited to read that and continue on with the Ice Planet Barbarian series, which I never thought I would enjoy. Um, and so then we got a purple um, disc, but we were not able to move forward. So this just kind of moves off to the side. Uh, and so we redrew. And with that one, we got a blue disc. So another sci-fi. And for this one, we got Kinga and Rue again. This one is childhood, so middle grade or younger. And for this one, might be a little bit of a stretch for sci-fi, 
but I'm pretty sure The Giver is classified as sci-fi, so I'm thinking this is the same. Um, and that is Gathering Blue by Lois Lowry, uh, and it's a companion to The Giver. So like I said, I'm pretty sure this works for sci-fi, and I would say this is middle grade. So you have Kira, an orphan with a twisted leg, lives in the world in a world where the weak are cast aside. She fears for her future until she is spared by the all-powerful council of the guardians. Uh, Kira is a gifted weaver and is given a task that no other community member can carry out. While her talent keeps her alive and brings certain privileges, Kira soon realizes that she's surrounded by mysteries and secrets. No one must know of her plans to uncover the truth about her world and to find out what exists beyond. So, yeah, I'm excited. I know I was never really interested in reading more um, that was part of the series, the same series as The Giver, because I just love The Giver so much, but I am excited to read this. I hauled it at a thrift store, so, um, hopefully, you know, it, it stands up, you know, and I enjoy it as well. So, then we got another orange, which, again, is mystery and thriller. Um, so there's that one, and for this one, we got another bookworm, and this one is earth element um uh, so mystery or thriller with an earth element and for this i was looking at my shelves and i found this one it's called the tunnels by michelle gang gangnon um and so this one it says the crime scenes are grim and otherworldly the bodies of two female students are found mutilated in an oddly positioned in the dark labyrinth beneath the school haunting symbols painted on the walls behind them in her decade tracking serial killers, FBI Special Agent Kelly Jones has witnessed terrible offenses against humanity, yet the tragedy unfolding at her alma mater chills her to the bone. Evidence suggests there's a connection between the victims, all daughters of powerful men, and elements of the killing point to a dark, ancient ritual. As the body count rises, so do the stakes. The killer is taunting Kelly, daring him to follow her da him down a dangerous path from which no one, only one can emerge. Sorry. Um, and so, yeah, I was thinking tunnels and then underneath the school, you know, that's in the earth is what I was kind of thinking. So that's what I'm going with for that one. And then the next one is going to be um, a little bit of a stretch, just a smidgen. So we pulled a bunch of discs. It was so many. So we already had the one, the purple one, where I wasn't able to move forward. Then we pulled two orange discs, um, and I wasn't able to move forward with them, of course. I pulled a green disc and wasn't able to move forward. Two more orange discs where I wasn't able to move forward. A purple disc where I wasn't able to move forward and then a green disc where I wasn't able to move forward before finally pulling a red disc um, which again is romance and we got another Winnie the Pooh and that brought us to the North Pole the red disc did so that's the end of the game um, so another Winnie the Pooh and this one is there is a rumbly in my tummy um, I love this prompt. I think it's so cute. So for this one, I decided to go with Sweet Revenge by Nora Roberts. Um, this is one that I have not read from her. It was one of the ones I needed to haul to complete my collection, and it's one I haven't read. So I'm excited to read this one. And I went because it has the word sweet on the cover um, or in the title. That's why I went with it. You know, sweets, honey. Rumbly in the tummy <laughs> was kind of my, and um, I think I was reading, yeah, right here. Uh, so she offers a deliciously satisfying tale, of romantic suspense. Uh, so delicious again, food that's what I'm doing. I'm not being as literal with this prompt. So at 25, Princess Adrian lived a life most people would envy. Beautiful and elegant, she spends her day dabbling in charities and her nights floating from one glamorous gala to the next. But her pampered rich girl pose is a ruse, a carefully calculated effort to hide a dangerous truth. For 10 years, Adrian has lived for revenge. As a child, she could only watch the cruelty hidden behind the royal facade of her parents' fairy tale marriage. Though nothing will bring back her legendary film star mother, uh, Adrian is consumed by one thought, to make her father pay. In his possession is one of the world's greatest treasures, a fabled necklace beyond price, the sun and the moon. But not for long. 
for Adrian has made it her business to develop some unusual skills, and now she's about to take a final, irreversible step. Yet just as she's poised to taste the sweetness of her long-sought revenge, she meets a man who seems to divine her every secret. Clever, charming, enigmatic Philip Chamberlain has his own private reasons for getting close to Princess Adrian, and only when it's too late will she see the hidden danger. But she finds herself up against two formidable men, one with the knowledge to take her freedom, the other with the power to take her life. So, yeah, I'm excited to read that one as well. So that is it for the game. Um, so that's 17 books there. The one I'm adding on, or oh, not it for the game. So the disc where we weren't able to move, um, I got, that's a total of eight discs. So two purple, four orange, and two green is eight. So for this one, um, I just need to find something to do with the number eight. So I chose Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen because it was published in 1813, so the 1800s, which have eight in it. So that's what I'm going with. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'm really, really excited to read this. Like I said, the movie with Keira Knightley is one of my favorites. Um, and uh, I'm excited to read this and everybody just seems to love this one so much. So I'm going to be reading this for the remaining disc. That's my number eight representation. Um, and so the extra one I'm adding on now is A Lots Away by Darcy Little Badger, since I was not able to officially get it on my TBR, um, which I was kind of a little bit bummed about, and I'm determined to read it in February. So imagine America very similar to our own. It's got homework, best friends, and pistachio ice cream. There are some differences. This America's been shaped dramatically by the magic, monsters, knowledge, and legends of its peoples, those indigenous and those not. Some of those forces are charmingly everyday, like the ability to make an orb of light appear or travel across the world through rings of fungi. But other forces are less charming and should never see the light of day. Lazoe lives in a slightly stranger America. She can raise the ghost of dead animals, a skill passed down through her generations of her Lipan Apache family. Her beloved cousin has just been murdered in a town that wants no prying eyes, but she is going to do more than pry. The picture-perfect facade of Willoughby masks gruesome secrets, and she will rely on her wits, skills, and friends to tear off the mask and protect her family. So, yeah, I'm so excited to read this one. Like I said, I wanted to read it and get it all last year. Never did. And so, yeah, I don't want it to go too long without picking this up. And then, of course, just a reminder, um, the 19th book on my uh, list is The Death of Sitting Bear by N. Scott Mamaday, which is a poetry collection. Um, so that one won't be too bad. It's only 192 pages and it's poems. So, so that is it. <laughs> I know it's a long video, uh, just like last time, but I just, I really, really enjoy this game. Um, I do think going forward, I will keep, I'll do move around the board and pull the honey jar prompts all together. I might try to see um, if I do rolls instead of pulling disc, how that might work for me, if that might get me a little bit smaller TBRs, because I did kind of want to slow down on my reading a little bit this year, and so far my TBRs, even with the game, are still quite large, so... Um, at least these first two months have been. And so we might try rolling a die next time and see if that gets me a little bit smaller TBRs. Um, the only thing with that is I won't have necessarily have the extra disc pulls where I can't move forward, which I kind of like that aspect. So we'll just see. We'll see how it evolves going forward. But for now, I'm really happy with my game. And let me know if you've read any of these. Um, or what you're anticipating reading in February, what you're excited for, and I'll go ahead and leave you guys here. Happy reading, everyone. Bye.